Well, it appears as if the $100 million that APAC is spending in Democratic primaries to defeat progressive members of Congress is paying off because polls currently indicate that the squad is about to be cut in half if these polls hold true. When it comes to Cori Bush, she is facing off against Wesley Bell in Missouri's first congressional district. And according to a February poll conducted by Remington Research Group, Bush is trailing Bell by 22 points. Bell actually abandoned his Senate campaign against Republican Josh Hawley in favor of challenging Bush instead and immediately boasted about pulling in $600,000 in campaign donations, surpassing Bush in fundraising almost immediately. And most recently, he touted endorsements that he's received from the Democratic Majority for Israel PAC, who's as eager to oust Bush as APAC is. He also was endorsed by APAC as well, of course. Now, when it comes to Jamal Bowman, who's currently facing off against George Latimer in New York's 16th Congressional District, a poll conducted by Mark Melman of DMFI found that Bowman is trailing Latimer by 17 points. APAC not only recruited Latimer to run against Bowman, but they've also contributed $600,000 to his campaign and endorsed him. As for Ilhan Omar, who's facing off against Don Samuels in Minnesota's 5th Congressional District, things aren't as bleak, but a Victoria research poll indicates that they are neck and neck. The Tennessee Star writes, When likely Democratic primary voters were initially asked about their preferences between Omar and Samuels, 49% said Omar, 30% said Samuels, and 21% said undecided. However, the same poll found that the margin shifted to tie between the two candidates, 41 one to 41 percent after those same voters heard samuel's message of being a progressive and pragmatic alternative to representative omar without the divisive comments and history of taking unpopular votes now keep in mind that ilhan omar only defeated samuels in 2022 by less than 2500 votes and this was after united democracy project which is one of apex super PACs, spent three hundred fifty thousand dollars boosting samuels last time so if they spend more this time odds are they could actually put him over the edge. Now, when it comes to Summer Lee, APAC seemingly isn't her biggest adversary this time, at least for now. But in the same way that APAC is funded by Republican donors, so too is the PAC against Summer Lee this time. She's facing off against Bhavani Patel in Pennsylvania's 12th Congressional District. And while I haven't seen polling, there's still cause for concern. First and foremost, the poll conducted in October by Embold Research found that Summer Lee had a net negative approval rating of negative five in a survey including 57% of respondents that were Democratic or leaned Democrat. Now, this is especially concerning for the fact that she only won her primary by less than a 1,000 votes last time, but it was still impressive nonetheless considering the amount of money that was spent against her by groups like APAC and DMFI. But this time, as Jewish Insider reports, they're actually not getting involved in this race, even though they recruited Patel to run against her. Now, the reason why they're not getting involved is because they really don't have to this time. They report, quote, APAC's Super PAC spent more than $2 million on anti-Lee ads in her 2022 primary against Irwin, that was her opponent last time, and Democratic Majority for Israel PAC added another nearly $500,000. So far, neither group has spent money on the race or even endorsed Patel. The only outside group spending big on Patel's behalf is Moderate PAC, a Super PAC funded by Republican investor Jeffrey Yass, which has so far pledged $570,000 in the race. Now, we'll come back to Moderate PAC in a moment, but Jeff Yass is a figure that would even be controversial in Israel because this is the Republican who is a Netanyahu ally that literally helped to fund his judicial coup attempt which is deeply, deeply unpopular among the Israeli public. As for moderate PAC, Akilah Lacey of The Intercept reports that it launched in January of 2023 to target progressives in Democratic primaries with Republican money, specifically money from Jeffrey Yass, who could be Trump's Treasury Secretary if he wins in 2024. In fact, he's likely to be Trump's Treasury Secretary if Trump wins. Yet moderate PAC is using Republican money to run ads like this against Summer Lee called Democracy at Risk. Our rights are under attack, our democracy at risk. And in this moment, Representative Summer Lee is opposing President Biden. She and the squad gave him the cold shoulder at the State of the Union, refusing to stand in support of his reelection. She has repeatedly called the president racist, and she even wants to dismantle the Democratic Party. 
We need a representative who will work with President Biden. And that's Bhavani Patel. Moderate PAC is responsible. For so do you see how duplicitous these ads are? The PAC being bankrolled by a Republican who will likely be part of Trump's administration is attacking a progressive Democrat under the pretense of protecting civil rights and democracy. Isn't that ironic? Now, as for Patel, she is parroting these smears against Lee that the moderate PAC is using. Uh, in fact, she's using the same exact talking points from that ad. For example, she attacked Summer Lee on Twitter because her staff supported what she's calling an anti-Biden effort in Pennsylvania to vote uncommitted in the primary. And she adds, this comes after Rep. Lee called to, quote, dismantle the Democratic Party. In the Trump era, Democrats must unite behind our president, not play these ridiculous games. So Patel is ripping her talking points straight from that moderate pack ad and she fashioned her own attack ad to be pretty similar let's watch the fern hollow bridge collapsed and president biden rebuilt it right away it's just one reason i was 100 percent for the biden infrastructure bill but summer lee was not i'm bhavani patel i approve this message because i'm about strengthening our party and rebuilding our region but Summer Lee wants to dismantle the Democratic Party, undermine President Joe Biden, and even wants to abolish the police. It's not debatable, it's documented. I'm Bhavani Patel. In the Trump era, Democrats have to stick together. Democrats have to stick together, which is why I'm proud to have the support of Republican mega donor Jeffrey Yass, who's likely going to be Trump's Treasury Secretary if he wins. So goddamn phony. So, of course, she's playing into moderate PAC's idea that Summer Lee is insufficiently loyal to Biden and she didn't even support his infrastructure bill. I mean, that's just self-sabotage, right? The problem is that she wasn't even in Congress when that bill was voted on. So what the fuck are you talking about? Sure, she criticized it, but it doesn't matter because she couldn't vote for it because she wasn't a member of Congress at that time. But I mean, these people are willing to say whatever they think voters want to hear in order to defeat Summer Lee. Truth be damned, they don't care. They will lie through their teeth all to win. Now, I do want to give you some hope temporarily before I take it away again, because of the polls analyzed, only one of them appears to be reliable. According to 538's poll ratings, Melman Group's DMFI pollster that found Bowman is trailing his opponent by 17 points is actually one of the least reliable pollsters with a 1.2 star rating out of 33 polls analyzed, meaning we really should take what they're saying with a grain of salt. As for Victoria Research, which found that Omar was neck and neck with Don Samuels, that one doesn't fare much better. They only have a 1.5 star rating based on two polls that 538 analyzed. However, when it comes to Remington Research Group, who found that Bush is trailing Bell by 22 points, it might be a Republican pollster, but they are actually reliable with a 2.6 star rating. Now, another caveat is that it's never wise to draw too many conclusions from a single poll because it's more smart to look at aggregate polling data and see what the average is in order to get a better sense as to where the election is heading. The problem is that there's usually not a lot of polling conducted for House primary races, so we're kind of forced to rely on this little data that we have, which includes junk polls released by DMFI and Victoria Research. Now, I think that they could be releasing these junk polls deliberately. Melman's DMFI poll, for example, was probably released to make Bowman's constituents feel hopeless and suppress turnout because if they think that he has no chance of winning, perhaps they'll stay home. Now, furthermore, if they create this narrative that Latimer is going to win and he has all this momentum, they're hoping to create a sort of bandwagon effect so that way voters opt for Latimer instead of Bowman so that way they can be part of the winning coalition because believe it or not, that is something that works on voters. Now, this is all conjecture on my part. I don't know what their motive is behind releasing these junk polls, but you shouldn't let these polls demoralize you. But at the same time, you can't not take them seriously, even if they might not necessarily be reliable, because this is the only information that we currently have. But like it or not, regardless if the polls are reliable or not reliable, the fact still stands that these progressives are facing serious threats. And after grassroots activists work their asses off to get them all elected, it would be so terrible to see them get replaced by a bunch of genocide supporting empty suits. We cannot let that happen. But one thing that I will say uh, that gives me hope is the fact that in the face of defeat, in the face of this massive threat, these progressives are showing why it's so important that they remain in Congress. It's because they're not backing down. So, for example, look at Jamal Bowman and what he says, because he took shots directly at APAC when you would think, you know, somebody without a spine would just shut up and not criticize APAC because they're already spending a lot. So you don't want them to spend more. Jamal Bowman is not taking this lying down. Listen to what he said. So we're doubling up and doubling up and doubling up. 
And so APAC is scared to death of us doubling up some more. So now they're coming at us with everything they have. Hundred million dollars, they put it on the table. Hundred million dollars. CEO of LinkedIn. CEO of OnlyFans, right? OnlyFans. <laughs> Putting in money to get us out of Congress. Why? Simply because we're fighting for the humanity and justice for all people? Simply because we do not support war crimes? We don't support an occupation? And we don't support black and brown babies in our own districts being killed? While being ignored by this political system that has been taken over by big money and politics? That's why! But we know throughout American history, throughout human history, everyone who fights for freedom, justice, and equality gets attacked and gets targeted and gets bullied. Everyone who does that. So we, Alex, have to wear this as a badge of honor. That's right. But we all need to wear it as a badge of honor because we are the resistance. Yeah! In Star Wars, we Luke Skywalker in there. We the Jedi's fighting back against this oppressive system. He must be protected. Ilhan Omar, Cori Bush, and Summer Lee, they all must be protected and defended. And if you live in one of their districts, sign up to volunteer if you can. If you don't live in their district, chip in a couple of bucks. I mean, they're going up against political behemoths and every single penny helps. Now, the last thing that I'll say is this. If the worst case scenario comes to fruition and these progressives, some or one of them, happen to lose their primaries to these APAC shills, they cannot concede. I'm going to repeat that. It's controversial, but I'm going to say it again because it's really important. They cannot and should not concede. What they should instead do is immediately pivot to independent campaigns and continue to run against the Republican and the Democrat in the general election. Because if their Democratic opponents are going to play dirty, they should too. Now, a lot of states have sore loser laws that prohibit candidates from running in the general after losing a primary. But guess what? New York is not one of them. And it's not like there isn't a precedent for this. In fact, Socialist India Walton beat Buffalo Mayor Byron Brown in a Democratic primary in 2021, but he never conceded. Instead, he launched a sore loser write-in campaign and ultimately defeated her in the general election. Now, I think that this move from Brown was embarrassing, despicable, and pathetic. He lost fair and square, but refused to concede. Having said that, though, it worked. And in the event Jamal Bowman, for example, were to lose, it would not be a fair and square loss. These progressives are competing against Democrats with millions of dollars in GOP donor money, while they're just raising money exclusively through small grassroots donors. That is not an even playing field. They're not just at a disadvantage. That is a rigged political system where elites can effectively tip the scales in whatever direction they want. That's not democracy. That's oligarchy. So it cannot, I repeat, cannot be tolerated. So with that being said, don't concede. You run as an independent and uh, see this election through to the end. That's what I would do if I were Jamal Bowman. Now, New York is the only state without sore loser laws, as far as I know. So what should the other progressives do? Say Cori Bush, for example. What should she do if she loses? Well, she has a lot of roots to the community, Right. So she should recruit a different progressive to run a write-in campaign, specifically with the goal of uh, winning. But if they can't win and they end up spoiling it for the APAC shill, too bad. Then you just work on getting that Republican out later because these are deep blue districts, right? So even if they try to run as a spoiler, odds are the Republican still isn't going to win. So try your best to still win even if you lose, even if it's with somebody else, because that seat deserves actual representation, not an empty suit who was bought off by Republican donors. Now, these Democrats who are taking all of this Republican money, they need to learn that voters are not going to tolerate that their electoral success hinges on foreign meddling and Republican donor money. That cannot be a new norm, 
right? You can't allow these Democrats to win by preemptively selling their souls to Republican donors, because at that point, what is the difference between Republicans and Democrats? The type of Democrat matters. You can't just lower your standards and accept anyone with a D in front of their name. If these are genocide supporting shills for GOP donors, you can't let them in. So try to run somebody else. And if you spoil it, you spoil it. Odds are you're not going to do that. But still, you can't just give up after they Try to destroy your career with all of this GOP donor money. That's fucked up and you cannot tolerate it. Now, thankfully, there's still a little bit of time to turn things around. So this is all just worst case scenario. But I don't want this video to depress you. I'm not trying to be overly negative. Just real with you. Don't let this video depress you. Let it enrage you. And then channel that anger that you're, you're feeling in a constructive way. And help save these progressives. Because it's not over till it's over. And we've got to make sure that we protect the gains that we've made. Losing them would be awful. So what we've got to do is try to have their backs in the best way that we can. So donate, volunteer, don't let these shills win. Mm -hmm.